Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Matt Workman, and I'm the developer of CineTracer. And if you haven't heard of it, CineTracer is a tool for cinematographers and filmmakers to plan visuals for commercials, feature films, television shows, and of course, it's built in Unreal Engine. So, is anyone here an Unreal Engine developer? Thinking about building something in Unreal Engine? So the title for this talk, I think, is officially something about cinematic lighting. It's going to be a little bit more about the process of well, why I built this tool and then how I built it in Unreal Engine. And there also happens to be cinematic lighting, so it's a little bit more like that. So uh, before I got into development in Unreal Engine, uh, I was a cinematographer in New York City, shooting music videos and commercials. This is me. This is the most impressive photo I could find of myself, so I hope everyone is, is quite impressed. This is going to have music in it, I think. Yeah. So this is the music video I shot. That was a set photo from it. This is 2012. And we'll wait for the music to calm down. This is how I was planning in 2012. I just want to communicate what are we doing here uh, for the director, for everybody. So I'm using Google SketchUp, Google Warehouse, all free assets. And this is like my state of the art 2012. And I'm a DP. I don't have a 3D background at that point. 2014, two years later, I'm still shooting commercials. And I have moved into Maya, right? I think a lot of people use Maya for visualization. I was watching videos from the third floor in Halon. Shout out if you guys are here or watching. You guys are awesome. Um, took a lot of inspiration from the previous work from the film industry in Maya. And this was my Maya. That was really quick. But I made cranes and different visualizations to show what the crane was doing. And they were literally cubes and cylinders. It wasn't great. But this is Maya Viewport 2.0 lighting real-time play blast. Not bad. Not bad. But just wait till the end when we get into the Unreal Engine stuff. It's way better. So uh, same kind of year, I started building lights, models of the real-world lights, and just trying to explain as much as I can. And th this just keeps going. This is like a top-down view. So you have like 2D CADs and 3D CADs all in Maya. I built this system. Co we did some betas with the mill. I never released it, though. And the mill was actually VFX supervising this shoot. Uh, but these are the type of commercials that I was doing. And I really like doing the previs. At a certain point, I like doing the previs and building the tools more than doing the shoots. And that's why I'm here today. Here's, uh, I think, the last demo from when I was a DP. This is called the Techno Dolly. And it's as close as you're going to get to like having a 3D camera in the real world. You literally can like set keyframes, walk somewhere, set a keyframe, and hit play. And it will just like whoop, do the thing. And I got known for doing this. You see the logo is cheesy. It said cinematographer previs artist. That's how I used to do it. Um, and I gravitated, and directors gravitated, gravitated toward me who really liked planning. So this was the director's previs. That's what I'm walking into. And this was my previs. And that's the Mills Techno Dolly rig. They sent that to me. Thank you so much, the Mill. And so this is my background. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this. And I'm getting known for it. And other people want to do it, but it's really hard, right? Like Maya is pretty significant time investment to do it. This clip keeps going. This is me setting the actual keyframes. But I'm so into this that like, I really want to dedicate my full-time energy into building tool sets for this. I believe this wraps it out. You can see that we've set these keyframes, and now the dolly, the techno dolly, is going to play them out. They're repeatable. You can do passes of them. And these are the type of shoots that I was coming from, and we planned the crap out of them. Like, you plan them, you present them to the agency, you present them to the director, you revise them, and you do it again. So, and this type of production planning is like really, really important. Next situation here. Okay, excuse the crap, the crappy slides here. So, I like this so much that at a certain point in my career, I start a company called Cinematography Database, and all I want to do is keep developing the software for myself, but then also for other people that want to start to use it. So I start a company, all the social medias, and I start making a plugin called Cine Designer, and it lives in Cinema 4D. We move out of Maya. So this is two, well, this video is a little bit newer, but 2015, 2018, I am doing a lot of social media. This is like a Twitch stream, I think, I feel like. And in this video, I'm relating real world light readings into Cinema 4D, and I built the system so that they kind of match. And eventually, we move into path tracing. This is with Redshift, Holler Redshift. They're over there. 
and we have amazing lighting. It's looking really good. But the issue is that this still takes like a ridiculous amount of time to learn. This, is, this happened. That's a 3D skate of me dancing, and we're going to wait for it. That's a 3D skate of me shooting me dancing. So I'm having fun with this, but it's still way too difficult for most cinematographers to get this deep into the workflow. It's a lot of work. So eventually, Epic Games actually reached out to me. They had been seeing the work I was doing. They're like, wouldn't it be cool, maybe, if you brought it into Unreal Engine? Spoiler alert, it was cool. It is cool. And so I started my very first Unreal Engine project. And Cinetracer today, which you haven't seen it yet, it's coming up, is literally pretty much like a third-person blueprint template. Anyone ever open that up? That's where it started. Lit that's like, and it's, it's still very much based in that, but we've done other stuff. And we eventually early release on Steam. So this is like the early days. This is like one of the first things I ever posted. Same 3D scanned, same third-person blueprint running around, kind of goofy, brought the lights in. These are LiDAR scanned uh, church in my area that I was messing with. And I'm starting to figure out, well, what can I do in a real-time game engine that I couldn't do in Maya? And this is definitely one of them. This is just messing around. And I posted this video on social media kind of as a joke. This wasn't my life yet. But the response was like kind of overwhelming. So I keep going. I bring that same techno crane from Maya into Cinema 4D. And I decide that it would be cool if you could drive it like a car. And this was honestly a mistake. I wasn't, uh, we were just recording stuff. I mean, I came back and did it again to do it for real. But we have physics, and it's real time. And we're moving cameras like it's a remote control car. And we're like almost like it's on set, almost like this is a live thing. You know, We're not setting keyframes, rendering, waiting. It's like, no, we just do this right here. This is being controlled with an Xbox controller. It's like, I can't think of anything more fun than this. Um, we posted this one online, and this went viral for a long time. So this is all pre-release, but it's good news that the videos we put out of it, it's like people like it enough to share it. So I'm taking the same 3D scan here. This was for Cinegear, which is a, a filmmaking conference. And I put this demo together. It's just this level of me playing instruments and me filming myself. That's the only model I had. And I'm just continuing to build out systems. So in this one, I'm starting to do what you do in the Unreal Engine, which is attach objects to each other. That's parenting, basically. And we're doing dynamic parenting of these objects together. This is called a C-stand. It's kind of a complicated thing. And we're doing it in the game, though. Here, I'm getting into lighting, like testing out the different cinematic lighting. And I'm designing a system in game where you can tell the characters to walk around and lay down. So like, we're making this really simple for people. That's the idea. So here we are, September 2018. We release on Steam. It is the worst thing you've ever seen. It's, it, it's, so, it's like one map, so buggy. But it has the general shape. People have been watching the development. And luckily, within, within the first month, we have thousands of users around the world. And they're primarily filmmakers. So every day after that, I'm adding features, like literally every day. And almost every day, I'm posting a video like this. This is just like a highlight reel of some of the cool videos we have. And I'm just trying to bring the functionality that we have in Maya and Cinema and just bring it into like a really simple package. And Unreal, Unreal Engine gives you all these tools to do this. So that was our like in-camera IK system. And this is a live shot. None of this is pre-recorded. It's all just screen capture, live recorded. Shout out Real Illusion character creator. They're over there. Uh, I'm using all of their characters when we're doing facial animation like this. So I'm trying to make just really simple controls. This will eventually work perfectly with AR kit for the phone. So you can just use your, use your phone to capture it. Look at that smile. Perfect. So this is just a lot of experimentation. If you've ever been on set, there's a lot of this cable wrangling, and I wanted to make a cool system to do that. And this is all blueprints. Almost every one of these videos is like, I had an idea, and in one day, I took like six hours in blueprints. I could even prove it. I did it on Twitch, a lot of it. And you can bang these out. Once you learn the system, you have an idea, you make it. Some of them are terrible like this one, but you can do it, and it's cool. And I've been doing this over and over again for about a year and a half. So this is right before ray tracing, OK? So this is me trying to make soft lighting. You typically have to bake soft lighting. It's like the only way. I know, I know a decent way. I know a trick, a decent trick. This is non-ray traced. And that's a pretty soft looking light. I'll make a course and sell it to you if you want to you know how that works. Yeah, so terrible UI. But like this whole thing's just a moving project. I did go to school a little bit for computer science, but I have no game programming background. I'm not a trained 3D artist. I was a DP for 10 years. So 
I'm just slowly massaging this together. But it is my full-time job, and I literally dream in blueprints still. I had a great dream last night. It was the best blueprint. So Cinetracer RTX. This is my build today on Steam. If you wanted to try it, you could. That would be awesome. It's in Unreal Engine 4.22. I keep it with the latest build as much as I can. And we have enabled real-time ray tracing. And we have designed new hybrid rasterized and ray traced lights. So there's a little bit of both happening at the same time. This is Cinetracer with ray tracing. And this type of lighting is usually associated with very long bake times. Maybe not in a small level here, but here we just do it all in real time. I'm running on a 2080 Ti at my house, so it's like high-end consumer. But as you look through the camera, you look at the lighting quality, it's really nice. And this is like really resonating with cinematographers. And, th and this is why a year and a half ago I started building this, was to get to this point, and it's coming together really nicely. Having this lighting in real time is great. Look at the physics. Look at the physics. So we're in an interior now. These are the hybrid lights. They have ray tracing on, but there's a lot of parameters you toggle. It's, it's actually one rasterized normal light with a ray trace light on top of it with certain settings that kind of cancel each other out in a certain way. But when you look at it really close, it looks like baked lighting, but you're moving it. So if you haven't tried ray tracing in Unreal Engine, it's awesome. And you should also package the project if you want to really try it. It performs a bit better package than it does in the editor. It's a small thing. Most people do a lot of ray tracing demos in editor. You get a little bit more if you package it. So for me, this is like coming to form now. This is not that long ago. This is in June. And as we look at this demo, you can really see that like this is cinematic lighting. It looks like almost like the lighting we were getting path traced in Cinema 4D, except each one of those single frames in Cinema 4D, I let it cook for like 10 minutes normally. This is real time. This is like 30 frames per second. I'm just screen recording it, live operated. You can move any of the lights. It's all dynamic. Let's go. Oh. Okay, cool. So right now we're in Cine Tracer, and I'm using my iPhone 10 with my Apple with an AR kit to record my face and audio. This is the first time I've done this in Cine Tracer, and I'm of course using my Xbox controller here to at the same time move the camera and operate it like a real cinematic camera. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're working on bringing this in. This is actually like two-year-old tech from Epic Games. It's free. You want this? You go download it in the learning content section, put it in your game, put it in your app. It's free. I just put it in there. And I'm going to integrate it with the Relusion characters so that anyone with an iPhone, you just turn on Cinetracer, you drag out a character, you pick out your phone, you start talking. And if you look at the render quality, for a certain application, this could almost be final pixel. I'm not saying we're a virtual production platform yet, but it's slowly moving in that direction. I make silly videos, OK? But like they do OK on Instagram. And this sets the tone for my application. I was having a conversation with someone who's trying to build something maybe for enterprise, and you try to keep it more serious. I'm not trying to keep it serious. I really want to show that like this is fun. It's interactive. Like Don't take it too serious. But at the same time, we can create great visuals. And I'm trying to make it like a real-time filmmaking app. I had some of that Unreal Engine popcorn. Anybody have that? It's a little bit like, don't before you speak. Bad idea. So uh, let this one roll out. This was actually previous for a job I'm shooting for Epic Games right now, but I don't think we can show that at the moment. Off the cliff. That's a motorcycle from the marketplace. It's really easy to add motorcycles to games now, really simple. So that's Cinetracer. Um, I think for this crowd, like, I don't have a gaming programming background. I'm a pretty bad 3D artist. I can get by. But year and a half of really just chugging along, I was able to take my previous industry knowledge, put together a product. It sells incredibly well. I'm very fortunate. Uh, I have a social media like, presence, so that helps a lot. But Unreal Engine is so straightforward to learn. There's so many marketplace assets to bring it in and prototype it that if you're thinking about doing it, I think now is a great time. Cool. Thank you very much. I'll hang out after if you have any questions. Thank you.